Hi, this is Mrs. Wiederholt, and welcome to my lesson video on adding and subtracting rational expressions. Now let's get started. Before we learn how to add rational expressions, let's do just a little review on adding fractions. When we add fractions, the denominators have to be the same. And once they are the same, all we do is add the numerators together. So if we look at our example 2 thirds plus 3 fourths, we see that our denominators are different, and so we will have to find the least common denominator. Now what this means is we need to find the, fi the, excuse me, the smallest denominator that they both have in common. We can do this by finding multiples of each of these denominators. So, for example, what are our multiples of 3? Well, we have 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, and we could go on. Now let's find our multiples of 4. We have 4, 8, 12, 16, and so on. Now, if I'm trying to find the smallest or least common denominator, I can stop right here at 12. So I know both of these numbers, we could use 12 as their least common denominator. Now, if I want to write 2 thirds as a fraction with a denominator of 12, I can do that. So I'm going to look at the first denominator, 3. 3 times what equals 12? Well, we know that's 4. 3 times 4 would equal 12. Now with fractions, if you multiply the denominator by a number, you have to also multiply the numerator by the same number. And that's so that the value of our fraction doesn't change. Now let's do the same thing with 3 fourths. If I want my denominator of 4 to equal 12, what do I multiply? Well, 4 times 3 equals 12. And so that means I also have to multiply the numerator by 3. So now, let's go ahead and multiply this out. Going back to the first fraction, I have in my numerators, I have 4 times 2, which is 8. So I have 8 over 12. And then for my second fraction of 3 fourths, I have my numerators, I have 3 times 3, which is 9 and my denominator is 12. And so now I can add these two numerators together because my denominators are now the same. So that means my answer would be 17 over 12. Now the reason why I wanted to review this is we are going to be using these same principles of finding a common denominator when we are adding rational expressions. We have to find a common denominator so that we can then add our numerators. So let's look and see what that's going to be like. So we are going to look at the example x plus 1 divided by 3x minus 9 plus 5 divided by x squared minus 5x plus 6. As you can tell from the example, we are trying to add these two rational expressions together. So as you see, there are six steps here, and we're just going to go through them one at a time. Step number one is to factor the denominators. Okay, so in this example, there's nothing to factor out of our numerators, so it's going to stay the same. Now, 3x minus 9, well, I can factor a 3 out. So that's going to be 3x divided by 3 is x. 9 or negative 9 divided by 3 is negative 3. So I've just factored the first denominator. Now let's look at the second fraction. My numerator is 5, and in my denominator, I'm going to say, what are my factors of 6 that add up to negative 5? Well, I know that negative 2 times negative 3 equals positive 6, and that means negative 2 plus negative 3 equals negative 5. So my factors are going to be x minus 3 times x minus 2. Now we are ready to find the common denominator. So let's look at the two denominators in step one. The first denominator is 3 times x minus 3. And the second denominator is x minus 3 times x minus 2. In order to have a common denominator, 
we have to have each term represented in the common denominator. So we already have x minus 3 in the first one and x minus 3 in the second one. So that x minus 3 is definitely going to be part of our common denominator. Now, in the first fraction, we have a 3 in the denominator. Well, we don't have that in the second one, but that does need to be part of our common denominator. And so if you look at the second fraction, we have x minus 2 in that one, so we have to include that in our common denominator. So our common denominator is 3 times x minus 3 times x minus 2. So the third step is to multiply each fraction by what is missing. Now look at our first denominator, which is 3 times x minus 3. And now look at our common denominator. What is this denominator missing? Well, it's missing the x minus 2. So that means I have to multiply this first fraction or this first denominator by x minus 2. And remember, if I multiply the denominator by a number or a term, I also have to multiply the numerator by that exact same term. Now let's look at the second fraction, or the second denominator. I have x minus 3 times x minus 2. Now let's compare that to our common denominator. Well, what is this one missing? It's missing this 3 right here. So that means I'm going to need to multiply this denominator times 3. And if I multiply the denominator times 3, I also have to multiply the numerator times 3. Now I'm ready to write this as one fraction. So I'm going to start out with the x minus 2 times x plus 1. And then I'm going to say plus the 5 times 3. And all of this is over or being divided by our common denominator of 3 times x minus 3 times x minus 2. Now I am ready to simplify the numerator. Now I'm going to look at these first two binomials, x minus 2 times x plus 1, and I can FOIL those. So here we go, x times x is x squared. My outer terms are x times 1, which would be x. My inner terms are negative 2 times x, so that would be minus 2x. My last terms are negative 2 times 1, so that would be negative 2, so I'm going to write minus 2. And now I'm ready to say plus 5 times 3. 5 times 3 is 15, so that is plus 15. Again, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite my common denominator. That is not going to change. So now the last step, step number six, is just to simplify it completely. And by, by that we mean simplify the numerator. The denominator won't change. So if I look at my numerator, um, I don't have any other x squared terms. So x squared is going to be in my numerator. Um, and you know what? I see I made a little mistake here um, where it says plus 1. That should be plus 1x or plus x. So we have x minus 2x, which is minus 1x. And so I'm just going to put minus x. And now I can combine the negative 2 and the 15. And so that's going to be plus 13. All of that is over my common denominator of 3 times x minus 3 times x minus 2. And so there you go. We've just added two rational expressions. One thing I want to point out is when we are simplifying our numerator, we are using our order of operations, what we would call PEMDAS. Um, you multiply before you add. And so that's why, if you look up here, we multiply these terms, and in a sense, we're multiplying these, and then we add together. So, with that being said, let's go on now and let's look at an example of subtraction. The rules for subtracting rational expressions are the same as addition, but remember, you're subtracting, so there is this negative sign to distribute, 
Or just remember, if you're having to multiply or distribute a number, it's going to be a negative number. So just don't forget that. This example is very similar to our last one, and that'll make it easy for us as far as factoring. Um, if we look at, so for step number one, we're going to factor the denominators. And so our numerator, of course, does not need to be factored. And the denominator, 3x minus 9, could be factored to be 3 times x minus 3. And now we're subtracting the numerator of x plus 5 divided by, again, this is x squared minus 5x plus 6, which can be factored as x minus 3 times x minus 2. Step number two is to find the common denominator. And in this example, we know that 3 times x minus 3 times x minus 2 is our common denominator. Step number three says we are to multiply each fraction by what is missing. So remember, we look at the first denominator, which is 3 times x minus 3. We compare it to our common denominator, and we look to see what's missing. And we do not have x minus 2. So that is what we're going to be multiplying our denominator by x minus 2. And if we multiply the denominator by x minus 2, we have to multiply the numerator by x minus 2. Now let's look at our second denominator, compare it to the common denominator, and see what's missing. And in this case, we're missing the 3. So we need to multiply this denominator by 3, which means we will also multiply the numerator by 3. Now we are ready for step number four, which is to write it as one fraction. So we have x minus 2 times x plus 1, and then that is minus x plus 5 times 3. Now let's write our common denominator, which is 3 times x minus 3 times x minus 2. Now remember, when you're adding and subtracting, once you find that common denominator, you're not going to have to do anything else with it. Now we're ready to move to step number 5, which is to simplify the numerator. So again, I'm going to use the FOIL method to multiply those first two binomials. And when I do that, I have x squared plus x minus 2x minus 2. Now I'm ready to multiply these two terms. Now a couple of things here. One, usually we see the 3 in front of the binomial. And so let's write it that way. We would have minus 3 times x plus 5. Now I want you to write it that way if it will help you to remember that you have this negative sign to distribute. We're not just saying 3 times x plus 5, we're really saying negative 3 times x plus 5. So when we do that, let's go ahead and distribute. That's negative 3 times x, which is negative 3x or minus 3x, and negative 3 times 5, which is negative 15, so we write minus 15. Now we're ready to put that all over our common denominator of 3 times x minus 3 times x minus 2. Now we're ready for the last step, which is to simplify completely. Um, I'm ready to combine like terms in my numerator. There are no other x squared terms, so x squared. I see x minus 2x minus 3x. If you look right here, x minus 2x minus 3x. So x minus 2x is negative 1x. Negative 1x minus 3x is negative 4x. So I write minus 4x. And then I can combine negative 2 and negative 15. Negative 2 plus negative 15 is negative 17. So I write minus 17. And again, I put that over my common denominator, which is 3 
times x minus 3 times x minus 2. And so there is our answer. We have just subtracted two rational expressions. Now I hope this lesson video has helped you, and I look forward to working with you again. Bye-bye.